Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Now, hey, Jay, yep. I got one question a couple of people are asking. Absolutely. Is this- I assume this is a daily chart. Is that correct? At least that's what yeah, I've been absolutely. trying to get. Yeah, yeah, my apologies. I should have, uh, I should have uh, identified that. We are looking at a daily chart on the CDD. In fact, all the charts that we'll look at are daily except for the one that I've actually labeled weekly. <laughs> so uh, this is a daily chart. Okay. Any, any, any other questions? Nope. Nope. Okay. Everything uh, looks like everyone's really following very intensely. Thank you. Perfect. Perfect. Now, uh, as I mentioned, it's very important to identify these key support and resistance levels. And those of you that have been watching our, uh, our weekly outlook, you'll recognize that we've essentially uh, identified this key level in here as sort of that line in the sand with respect to any sort of a retracement back down into these lower lows. But further to that, we've actually uh, identified this level in here as a key resistance. And in fact, today, you know, I apologize, this is a snapshot from uh, from. Uh, the other day, but we actually uh, are now trading and have the last two days traded back into this 107, uh, we call them focal zones, but uh, it, it really, the price action really seems to be hesitating here. So uh, it, it's actually, again, another clue for us to to uh, just be cautious with respect uh, to any sort of continuation and keep in mind that if we're going to make uh, move into higher highs, we need to see a break above this resistance level before we can start targeting uh, the area that uh, we've identified as our, as our further target to the upside. Okay. Now, I see there is a question, do you combine breaks of pivots with momentum? And uh, the answer, you're, you're a couple of uh, steps ahead of me here with respect to that. We're actually going to start combining some of these other uh, indicators. Right now, we're just talking about the basics, and then we'll put all the pieces together um, as, we, uh, as we move forward. So um, on, uh, Fine, on, that, on that note, um, just a little, uh, a little more on support and resistance, because uh, I think everybody can see at this point that really that, that – is, is more or less the foundation with respect to uh, our technical approach to, uh, to understanding the markets. And, uh, and understanding a technical, uh, or sorry, understanding a sport and resistance is, is quite simply, the, uh, quite simple, sorry, the peaks and the troughs are really what we're looking at as support and resistance levels. And uh, they simply represent strength uh, or weakness at certain price levels. And, and this being a, uh, a business of probabilities, we have to look at these areas of strength or these areas of weakness and manage our positions accordingly, um, you know, based on the observations that we're, uh, that we're making. Now, uh, this is very, very uh, basic, I know, but the lows are considered our support levels and uh, our highs are considered resistance. And just to uh, sort of reference our lows here, um, I tend to use the analogy of, um, you know, picture a person sitting in a bathtub on the, in the top uh, floor of an apartment building and uh, that floor giving way. Recognize that, that that ride is not going to end until that next floor holds. So when we look at these support levels, particularly if I, you know, uh, we can look at it in the context of the U.S. dollar, we could look at it in the context of, uh, you know, the S&P, which is, you know, benchmark for the U.S. economy. The idea is that when these key support levels break, picture a poor guy in a bathtub holding on for dear life and not prepared to really make any sort of decision until they see if the next floor holds. And, um, you know, similarly, you can take that analogy and flip it to the upside. Those resistance levels, again, resistance, uh, look it up in the dictionary. They're areas where, um, you know, certain action is meeting with, uh, with uh, well, again, resistance, and we have to be prepared to, of, of an opposite sort of reaction off of those, uh, off of those key areas. Um, now, some possible implications, uh, you know, an early warning of a trend reversal, which uh, we'll actually address uh, when we look at some of our simple patterns. We can uh, look at resistance being violated as essentially the continuation of an uptrend. So, you know, I always get a lot of phone calls with respect, particularly when, you know, a lot of these commodity stocks were trading at uh, all-time highs. You know, is it time to get in? Should I get in? And 
you know, the, the, my, my one answer to everybody is that, you know, if this trend is going to continue, we need to see a break of that high. So don't rush in. Nothing moves in a straight line. Wait for a consolidation to take place, and then look for that uh, violation of a, of a resistance level as the potential for a continuation to the uptrend. So you, you need to put, you know, a few rules in place uh, to keep you from jumping in and jumping the gun, uh, which uh, it, it can happen quite easily. Of course, uh, yep, sorry, go ahead. One problem I, I have, and I, I agree with everything you're saying, that, and I think a lot of people are probably thinking this also, is that you know, sometimes the best trades are when, uh, when you have that high thrust or the propulsion where recently, I guess November, where the U.S. dollar just completely sank against the Canadian dollar, yep. and then in the last six or eight weeks where there were a lot of people that were saying the U.S. dollar um, was rallying, but wait for a pullback, and we never got the pullback. Maybe a little bit against the Canadian dollar, but against, let's say, the Australian dollar or the euro, yeah. the pullback never really came. Well, you, what do you do with those kind of situations? You're 100 percent. You're 100 percent right in that in that sense. And um, again, we look at probabilities, and history has taught us that in in any um, major move, whether it's currencies, equities, so on and so forth there tends to be a retracement of that move and you know that's something that we've been identifying and and you're right you know unfortunately you know sometimes when you when you have a a set of rules or a methodology in place you know um sometimes you miss certain opportunities because of that and um you know in in uh, in saying that uh, you know some of the ways that you could actually have uh looked at that um, particularly those those currencies is a smaller time frame in the sense that your ISEFX pairs um, uh, currency pairs are uh, are presented on a on a day to day basis and particularly the uh, the pairs that trade in an overnight session you could actually go to the FX market break it down to an hour, hourly chart and then apply the same information so although on a daily from a daily perspective you didn't see that that level of retracement you you would have on a smaller time frame been able to identify some of these some of these pullbacks and potentially use those as uh, as an entry point now uh, again i always look at it as that you know if you're following your rules and the rules have been working for you in the past uh, if you miss a few opportunities along the way, um, it's an opportunity cost, but it's not a capital cost in the sense that you know you haven't uh, you haven't lost anything. And I would be remiss to say that um, you know that that uh, that is something that happens all the time in the sense that. Um, you know, you usually do see a pullback, and, and just as they say, you don't want to try to catch a falling knife when the markets are falling. I think the same rules should apply to the, to markets as they're as they're uh, moving up. Um, you know, a lot of calls on the uh, commodities market when oil was starting to reach higher highs. Should I get in? Should I get in? Uh, an ounce of caution, uh, uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, as they say. If you're not sure, just step out and wait for it to happen. And now we're seeing great, that pullback. Great, great point. Great point. There's a lot of questions rolling in, Jace. Okay. It's okay with you. Why don't you just, you know, finish your presentation, sure. and otherwise we'll end up all over the place. So I, I have to apologize because I interrupted. Just go no, no problem. No, answer. no problem. We can answer questions uh, towards the end uh, as well. Now, um, uh, again, just to kind of get back to what the possible implications of our support and resistance levels, uh, we were using them for possible uh, trade uh, entry identification. And we're also using them as uh, price targets for, uh, for trade um, exits. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.